Well, come along to Champion House in Douglas. It's quite a media area. We've got G's, we've got green lights, and now NGFM. I thought to catch up with uh, June Turner, your new home. A uh, f- fair few of the years since I've uh, worked with you, actually, June, isn't it? Yes, Paul. Of course, you remember when we started oh. off with the studio in the Summerland Complex there. That was, that was amazing. Yeah, uh, groundbreaking at the time, and the technology has totally changed, which is why you've come along today to have a look at uh, mm. the new technology that we're using here in the new studio. So what's happened? All the old-fashioned stuff's gone, and it's all gone digital, right? Yes, of course. Uh, you'll remember the days of uh, tape, wind up. carts. Yeah, um, thousands of carts, and uh, I can remember when we first launched Energy FM, we actually had a computer, and um, there was one computer, and that was it. <laughs> it stored very little amount of music. It was mainly the adverts and the jingles, and uh, we thought it was fantastic at the time because we were able to get rid of the old uh, yeah. carts, cartridges, and uh, play stuff off the computer. How times have changed in quite a short amount of time. How is the state of radio in the Alabama? Because I mean, everyone's saying there's three stations, you know, here, and how can they all get on and make a living? Is it all right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's a difficult marketplace because it's not just radio. I mean, people tend to try and pigeonhole and say, "How do you compete with Manx Radio and Three FM?" Mm-hmm. Well, of course, you're not really competing with them. You're competing with everybody because. People only have a, a finite advertising market, uh, a budget, and they've got to spread that out across the market, whether it be in print media, online media, or traditional radio media. So it's not just competing with other radio stations. You've got to really fight for your customers, and uh, you know the aim is to mm-hmm. deliver for them. And each station should have a different market. Is that right? Is that still the way it should be? Yeah, I mean, each station has a format, um, which is is what we agreed. Our format is very similar to the uh, the stations across that people might be familiar with, the likes of uh, what was called Key 103, Radio City in Liverpool. Mm-hmm. It's that sort of big city chart hit format. Um, CHR, uh, of course, people in the industry would know it as. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the format that Energy FM is, um, playing mainly chart hit music from the past sort of 20 20 years or so sure. I mean all these stations are getting gobbled up in the UK aren't they the, the, the globals and the, the bowers and that sort of thing are buying up all the local stations and branding them and having one person doing a, st- a, a program in London and it's playing out up and down the country what, what do you think of that well, I can see the business sense of that because what Global are doing is they're rolling out a national brand with the likes of Heart and Capital and then they've got their other brands, for example, uh, they've got Smooth, um, XFM, which is a smaller brand and, mm. and more tightly focused and of course the LBC, which is a very popular station in London that's now expanded across the, yes. the UK on, on London the Broadcasting, area. which is now leading Britain's conversation, I think they rebranded yeah. it as that, Yeah, it's had to keep, yeah. keep the same keep the name LBC Yeah Okay, well, here in the Armand, I mean, uh, Manx Radio is going to be issuing their, their way forward in October. It's Timwell, isn't they? Um, anything that you, comes to mind on that side of things? You, do you want to see any changes? Well, we've lived through, I don't know how many Manx Radio reports, um, including when we were both working there, in fact. And it, these reports just gather sh- dust on the shelves. Um, and then five years go by and we have another report and nothing really happens and so I'm I haven't got too overly excited about this at all we've been focusing on um, moving the radio station building the new studios and focusing on what we're doing as a business really is as to mm-hmm. well I gave evidence to that select committee um, about what I thought should happen to Manx Radio and its public service remit um, they didn't take any notice of it but it was a great afternoon out um, and um, you know that what will be will be I don't really think politicians have the um, the appetite to make any changes to it. I still think uh, Manx Radio is a very good public service, but I think it would be better served being under the auspices of the BBC. They've got the resources, they've got the financial uh, backing, they've got the ho- huge machine behind them uh, to enable them to do various things, and I think it's a missed opportunity. Uh, and you talk about like the Jersey Guernsey sort of one, where they do a bit of TV as well and opt outs and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. I think if, if Manx Radio was put under the BBC, it would have the ability to to do other things and pull those resources in. Um, I don't think they'd go down the. I don't think it would be wise to go down the full TV route like the Channel Islands did, because you know I think that ship sailed 
20 years ago, mm -hmm. um, particularly now with new media, would the BBC be putting a, a TV station into the Channel Islands today? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I don't think that's the, re the way they should go. I think they should focus on public service broadcasting in the same geese as they're doing now, um, but uh, I still think they should be under the BBC. And you work in the commercial era with a, a scenario here. I mean, do you fancy public service money yourself? I mean, because there's all these, all these other ideas, you, 3FM, whatever. I, d I don't think we've ever really pursued public service money um, because we're a different... We are a public service, there's no doubt about it. All the stations are a public service. Um, are you a jukebox radio, as, as you are referred to on by some people at, oh, well, at, at the radio yeah. station? Well, of course, they'd like to refer to that because it, it's a great thing about sort of, you know, put down your competition right. and, and try and paint them as a picture. But um, the fact is that we're not completely a jukebox. We have a lot of local content on the station, news, travel public events, things that are on, you know, you'll hear about it here. There's a tree down blocking the, the main road, we'll tell you about it. Um, you know, power lines are down, we'll tell you about it. So it's not just a jukebox. Um, however, I think, you know, in terms of public service money, we would never really want that because then you've got obligations. Yeah. What we would obviously fight for is a share of any um, advertising expenditure the government would wish to spend on media outlets that's where we would focus looking for uh, that money but we'd have to bid for that like mm -hmm. every other advertising outlet okay well it's good to see you on higher ground because i think once the last times we saw you, you you were a bit worried about disappearing as the river was going up all those years ago remember yeah absolutely they, the, uh, yeah we, we'd moved to those studios temporarily and we were there for five <laughs> years and uh, i can remember i was i was somewhere in town and someone had put a photograph on facebook of the river flooding at the black dub uh, out near Glen Helen, and I thought, "Oh, I uh, wonder what the river's doing down near the studio." So I uh, I got down there, and it was lapping over the wall, and within 20 minutes, the whole industrial estate was flooded. and And we were very, very lucky because uh, where our studio was 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 above the flood line, but oh. but units further down the yeah. estate were totally wiped out. I mean. They, they did suffer a lot of hardships, some of those businesses. So it, it was time to move to higher ground. So from Sumland to Market Hill to Tremo, Low Tremode, now to Champion House and the, this, this Media Hub. This is it now, is it? NGFN's future's here? Uh, I certainly hope so. I mean, this, this studio, um, which is uh, part of our, our rollout of our facilities, does um, it is significant investment for us in providing the new kit. I mean, it's completely digital. There's a lot less wiring involved. Um, and, and I think, you know, we've invested in this for, for the foreseeable future. And certainly this building, which is, um, as you say, a media hub. We've got Duke, Duke Marketing, who, are, who own the building mm -hmm. and have all their facilities here. Uh, we've got Greenlight TV next door, who are uh, well known for doing um, lots of motorsport worldwide. And, of course, recently started in the TT again and, and indeed broadcasting actually live from their facility. Those programmes are going out um, to, the, to the network. Um, and Man in Media just up the road. Yeah. It really is, it's almost like a sort of a, a miniature version of uh, a media village. Well, it's just a shame I was too old these days because I, I had a great time at NG. But you're still doing some shows. You're also getting uh, it's a bit high now. Yeah, I, I tend to do all the bits that nobody else wants to do. Uh, you know, or you know, somebody goes sick. Um, but but I, I really prefer to be behind the scenes on, on in terms of the radio because I try and make it all happen behind the scenes and, and do all of that but you know you know you'll have to come back for a reprise <laughs> when you start with, without a, a second no, no, when you start your older station maybe who knows uh, watch this space oh oh <laughs>